up there yet. <laughs> Still setting up. Do, 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 do. Reminds me of Kelly Clarkson. Mm -hmm. fine. All right, we're live. Awesome. And so will we see how many people are on like we like we normally do? Oh. All right. Awesome. Oh my goodness. That looks awesome. You guys, we're live on our first Zoom meeting. Yay. I bought stock in um, Zoom six months ago. Did what? I wish I'd bought stock in Zoom six months ago. Isn't that the truth? Yeah, I tell you. Um, we're going to just kind of hang on and chit chat amongst ourselves for a second here while we have our audience um, joining us. We have um, how many people we got on? Huh? 70, 70 people already. Whoa, 80. Okay, so. Our combined audiences are excited about us getting together and talking this morning. This is, uh, I'm telling you guys, the first time we've done a Zoom meeting on Facebook. Um, we're looking forward to doing others because this is a very cool platform to work with. Um, all right, so we're just going to hop in here for those of you who are on. And I'm going to start out just talking to you guys a little bit about who we are. And then um, we're going to hop into the journeys block of the month and tell you a little detail about that. But my name is Deb Luttrell. I am the owner of Stitch in Heaven, along with my son, Clay. And we own the best little quilt shop in Texas. Um, we are located in a very small town of 1,809 in Quitman, Texas. So we're a really big quilt shop. Our store is, our new building here is 17,500 square feet. Uh, we're a, so we're a new, we're a big building in a small town. And we're bringing lots of commerce to this little city. And they, uh, the, uh, we love Quitman, uh, Quit, uh, Stitch and Heaven began in Quitman about 24 years ago. We were here for 17 years. We moved to uh, down, down the road 10 miles to a location for about five or six years, and we have just moved back. So that's been very exciting for us. Uh, we're known for our Block of the Months. We are called uh, your Block of the Month headquarters. We also have a robust e-commerce uh, department. Uh, of course, a beautiful showroom here for you guys. We do bus trips in, all kinds of things like that. And we also offer quilt cruises. And yes, the cruises will be back. Uh, our quilt cruises are tremendously fun. So we, we, um, we love offering those. We offer oh, 15 to 20 quilt cruises a year with various guests, teachers on them. So that's just a little bit about me. I'm going to move to Marie. Marie, why don't you tell us about yourself and what you do, kiddo? Well, let's see. Well, I read a lot. I quilt a lot. Uh, but how I really spend my time is writing novels. I have written 15 full-length novels. Uh, excuse me, I've actually written 16. My 16th is coming out um, I just finished it and it's actually, you know, you never really know until you walk away. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's called, that new one's going to come out in uh, 2021. It's called The Restoration of Celia Fairchild. And yeah, after I walked away from it a couple of days and went back and read, I was like, you know, this is a very good book. So I was happy about that. But I have also written a number of novellas. Um, I write what's called women's fiction. Women's fiction, a lot of people instantly say, oh, is that romance? Well, there may be a little bit of a love story element in my books, but most of the, and I have written some romance, um, but most of the time my books are really about the personal development of the female heroine who is dealing with the kinds of problems that real women really struggle with in their real lives you know, relationship problems, career problems, financial problems, mother problems, husband problems, <laughs> kid problems, all those kinds of, of issues. And so um, one thing that is really important in my books always 
is that there is always a happy ending in my books. So if at some point you're really worried about the character, like if it's not, you're not at the end yet, don't worry about it because it's all going to be okay. Because my mm -hmm. motto is life is hard, but fiction does not have to be. So everything will always work out. Um, let's see, other stuff about me. Uh, well, I mean, I've had my books published in, I believe, 10 different languages. Um, I've been on the bestseller lists. Uh, oh, it's saying my internet connection. Oh, there it's back. Um, I've been on bestseller lists. One of my books, The Second Sister, was made into a Hallmark Hall of Fame movie, yeah. which was like really a big deal. Um, but they called the movie Christmas Everlasting. And Ms. Deb Tucker, my dear friend, helped create a quilt that went with that. We had so much fun with that. Deb and Tucker and I have been having way more than our share of the fun for a very long time. So, long time. Um, you know, the big themes in my books are often there's a themes of, of, you know, quilting has been part of my life. So they say you should write what you know. So often quilting uh, appears in my books because it's a beautiful metaphor for, you know, in, in a quilt, we have all these little scraps and bits and pieces. And what are we supposed to do with them? Well, if we do it well, if we live life well, we pull them together into something that's beautiful and useful and uniquely ours. And so that's a theme that carries forward in a lot of my books. Um, friendship is a big a big part of my books, forgiveness, creativity, and just, um, I write about strong female characters who feel like friends. So that's my world. That's what I do. Um, yeah. I just sit and write. Yeah, I loved the, I loved the, the Hallmark movie. I don't watch Hallmark movies, but I landed on that and oh my gosh, I just loved it. And at the time I did not realize it was from your book. I oh, loved that movie. <laughs> That's you know, yeah. I got to meet Tatiana Ali and Patti LaBelle and Dennis Haysbert. I mean, I got to go on the set. It was like maybe the greatest day of my oh, life. Oh, well, you know, I've been on Kelly Clarkson, so come on. <laughs> well, listen, let's talk to Deb Tucker. Deb, tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, Deb and I, obviously being in the quilting world, go back a long way together as well. We've been friends a long time. Uh, we've got, we've travel through this crazy quilting industry world uh, and seeing all the changes and everything. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us about your story. Well, um, I am a, I'm a quilt maker and I'm addicted. So I guess I should start out that way. I've actually been quilting for all, I figured out the other day, it was all, it's almost 40 years. And, um, you know, throughout the process, um, we did a lot of moving throughout our, my life with my husband, but um, quilting was always something that I could take with me. It was something that opened up new communities to, me, to us when we would move to a new community. The first thing I would do is find the local quilt shop, find the local quilt guild, and just like that, I would have an instant group of friends, which was always beneficial. But over the course of, you know, 40, almost 40 years of quilting, you start to figure out what you like and what you don't like. And, you know, as a new quilter, I, start, I tried everything, every, every type of technique and process that came out there. And I actually ended up settling on machine piecework. And so I've always classified, classified myself as a machine piecing efficiency expert and, um, and a teacher. Primarily, I've never walked in your shoes, Deb, and owned a quilt shop. I'm a terrible business person. I'm, I'm an accidental entrepreneur, truly. Um, and Marie, I write, but it's step one, do this. Step two, do this. Step three, do this. There's no creativity there. The creativity happens in the, in the quilting that I do. And so, you know, I, I do have a business. My business name is Studio 180 Design. And the business is primarily tool-based. Because when I was in a classroom, I always felt that it was my job as, a, as an educator to make sure that quilters left with the very best projects that they could build and that they were happy doing it. And working through the whole philosophy of making shapes oversized and trimming them down was what I knew really helped everybody, whether, whether the quilter in the classroom was a rookie or whether they were a veteran. So following that philosophy, I've designed, a, I think I have 19 patented tools at this point. You are and, a master. 
You are a master at that. Best, well, best on the planet. I, I cannot you. even figure out how your brain works. Oh, it's a scary place. You don't want to go there. For sure. <laughs> I know how Deb's brain works. Well, no, excuse me. I don't know how her brain works, but here's a Deb Tucker thing. I have hung out with her so much. And I do want to say, like, I do not get a cut of Deb Tucker tools, but I recommend them to everybody because I personally am a writer because I can't do math. So with Deb, I don't have to do math. But so many times, Deb, I've seen you stand in front of the quilt and she gets this little tilt to her head and her eyes narrow. And she thinks and she mumbles almost to herself, there's a better way to do that. It's and there always is. <laughs> and that's the truth. And, and people ask me all the time, well, how do you come up with this stuff? And, and sometimes it's a question. A lot of times it's a question. Someone will ask about, can I do, how about, do you have something for you know, this project or this design? And it just, I tell them, I, if I don't, I tell them I don't. But I think about it and it, it, it rolls around in my head. And of course, the husband who was around when I started quilting 40 years ago knows, knows the symptom. I hop up in the middle of the night and like, I know how to fix this. And off I go. I mean, it's two or three in the morning. He says, I'll see you in a couple hours. And I'm off and I'm up into the studio and up into the quilt room and cutting up fabric and grabbing a piece of plastic and making lines on it and saying, I think I need this and doing a drafting. And, and I just don't know how it happens, but it does. So. Wow. All righty. Well, I love your tools. I love your writing, you. Marie. So this is what we're about to tell you guys about is going to be awesome. And um, we're about, to, I, I want us to talk about the purpose of us being here today is to talk about this new block of the month program that we're about to launch. And I want to tell everybody, you guys stick around because there's going to be giveaways at the end that always keeps your audience up. You know, if you announce that in the beginning, we're going to have giveaways, then people will stay on on and, and listen to us. Um, but this is going to be fun. Um, the, the block of the month program that we are uh, going to launch is called Journeys. And so my part of this is just to tell you how this idea came about. I um, We've done block of the month programs here for 20 of the 24 years that we've been in business. And I, we, we perfected how we do it. We perfected how we do it. And I listen to customers and I have an intuitive um, gut feeling kind of a thing that I know the kind of programs that a lot of people like. And one of the programs that a lot of people like is a program that has a story with it. We like to have a program that, um, you know, we all the programs we've ever run that have stories attached to them do well. And that's one thing that people like. Another thing people like is they like to be able to learn things. Da-da, you know. So I thought, well, what if we could put together a block of the month program where there's a story and people learn things. Wouldn't that be awesome? And so I started just kind of brainstorming. Uh, in my, it was actually in my own brain. I was brainstorming with myself and thinking about this and um, started thinking about my favorite authors and my favorite people that teach things. And that would be Marie and that would be Deb. And so we also, uh, I got, got in touch with them. I kind of launched the idea on them, uh, one of this, what if, and we just kind of started talking back and forth and figuring out the details of how we would do it. And I said, but wait, there's more. We need somebody who can develop a beautiful fabric collection to go along with this project that we're dreaming up. I mean, literally we dreamed this up and my one of my favorite designers of all time is Jason Yenter with In the Beginning Fabrics. Jason couldn't join us today, but we chose him because he is just an incredible artist. He's an incredible graphic designer. And he just he is intuitive about the kinds of things that work together and the colors that work together. And and it, it's just amazing to see him work because he took the theme of what we were doing. He immediately knew and he just jumped in and he developed this fabric that you guys are going to love. I think Deb is going to maybe show you a piece or two of it. Well, 
as as we go along. Um, so that's kind of how it happened. Um, the program is going to be um, launching in September. We hope, fingers crossed, because we're having having um, fabric printed, and um, it, it, it's going to be exciting. Uh, we've had a tremendous amount of people sign up so far for it, and we're still taking signups. But anyway, I want to move over to Marie and and just kind of let you take it from here and tell me how you came up with this story and a little bit about the story that we're going to be um, enjoying as we make this project. Absolutely. Well, you know how this came about because Deb Luttrell called me and when Deb Luttrell calls you, you take the call because there yeah. is no better. She, well, she's just brilliant at this. I mean, um, Deb kind of, as far as I'm concerned, Deb practically invented online business for, for quilting. And she's been doing it just about longer than anybody else. And I've known Deb for a while and I've, I've signed in her booth at shows and I actually got to go and sign in the store one day. And that was a yep. lot of fun. And she sent me home with lots of fabric. So of course I love her forever now. I would do anything for this woman. But she called me up and she had this idea of like, Hey Marie, what if we did a story that went with a quilt and Deb Tucker? Well, I mean, listen, I would go anywhere with Deb Tucker. I mean, if Deb Tucker just said, hey, get in the car, we're gonna drive across, you know, if she jingles the car keys, I'm in, cause we're gonna have a good time and it's gonna be fun. There will also be excellent food. If you ever wanna know where to eat in any restaurant, any town in America, ask Deb, she knows the best places. So, but here's the thing. I am such a slow writer. I am so slow. I have friends who write fast. I am not that girl. I write one novel a year and I write, I mean, I work incredibly long weeks and long days to be able to get that one novel out. So as much as this sounded like fun, the idea that I was gonna be able to write even a novella, which this is, and by the way, people have asked me, what's a novella? It's a short novel. It's all it is, it's just a shorter version. Um, but to add that to my writing schedule was a little bit, you know, daunting. I just was like, I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to do it. Well, here's what motivated me. Other than, you know, this was my dream team of people that I would have loved to have worked with. But um, a lot of people got to know me because of my cobbled court books. Uh, but they don't, not everybody realizes that I wrote three books before I wrote the single thread, um, which now it's saying my, oh, there we're back again. Um, single thread was the first book in my cobbled court series. And that book, Reader's Digest bought it the same day, the same week that I finished it. And suddenly, like I was Miss Bostwick and people were returning my phone calls, which had never been the case before. But before that, I wrote three books and they were World War II historical fiction. And they, I thought they were really good and um, they were nicely reviewed and they actually won some awards. And um, my very first novel, Fields of Gold, was a finalist for the Oklahoma Book Award, which is pretty good considering I'm not from Oklahoma. So, but the problem was no one actually bought them, which is an issue in publishing. You really need people to buy the book, but I love that World War II historical fiction. But the books of mine that really took off were my contemporary novels. Well, so Deb Luttrell calls up and I said, well, what kind of a story do you want me to write? And she said, I don't care. And it was all going to kind of, how this was going to go. I got to like call the shots of what we were going to do. And I said, well, could I do a historical novel? And she said, I don't care. And I said, could I do a World War II book? And she said, I don't care. And at that moment I said, I am in. So I sat down and I started to think about what would I want to write? And you know, a novella is shorter. So I had to be able to tell a story in a pretty succinct timeline. Um, I am putting in extra hours to make this happen, but I'm really happy with the book that I came up with um, and it's called Letters to PJ. And PJ is Penelope Jane, and but everybody calls her PJ. She's, when the book opens, she's 17 years old, but she'll be, oh, 18 to 20 for most of the story. She comes from a fairly wealthy family in New York, but she can just see her whole life mapped out in front of her, the way her mother 
wants her to live her life, which is not how PJ wants to live her life. So PJ is going to have all kinds of unexpected adventures. Um, she is going to meet people. She is going to go places and it's all set against the backdrop of things that are happening, particularly with women in World War II. And a lot of the story, because um, it starts off with a letter and there will be various letters throughout the story because I love that. I miss letter writing. E email's great, but I still write actual letters with a pen and paper. And you know, in that time, that was mostly how people communicated all across long distances. So that became kind of the initial jumping point. World War II, this, this young girl who, who wants to have adventures, but spelt, feels held back by kind of circumstances and her birth and then the letters that go between and of course there will be friends and a handsome heroine and a happy ending so that's all i'm going to tell you right now but i can tell you i've had um even though i'm putting in a lot of extra time to make this happen for you i've been having a really good time with this story and i think it's one you're going to enjoy and yep every single month there's going to be a cliffhanger deal with it <laughs> so nice <laughs> Okay, nice, nice. Michael, what did you do? <laughs> <clears throat> We've got well, Marie on the screen it. now. Huh? I'm still seeing everybody. I can see everybody. Okay. Awesome, all right, all right. awesome. Um, okay, we're gonna jump over to Deb Tucker. Now, the reason I pulled Deb Tucker into this is just because you know, Deb has got some of the most amazing tools on the planet. And Deb is tirelessly, relentlessly, uh, fabulously focused on going to quilt shows and having a booth there so she can teach you guys how to use her tools. Right? Uh, She's yeah, amazing. I saw, I saw another thing. Yep. Yeah. But there's just so many people that you can see at a quilt show. And if I don't go to a quilt show, how am I going to learn how to use these tools? So I thought, what a great opportunity to take this project and to let it focus on using Deb Tucker's tools. And so that was my thinking in bringing Deb in uh, into this. So why don't you tell us about the quilt and what we can expect with the tools and all of that good stuff. Well, Deb, I don't know whether you realize this or not, but one of the one of the things that you said to me when I said, well, you know, what are my limits on the quilt? She said, none. She said, I said, do you want me to limit it to two tools or three? She said, I don't care. You use as many as you want. Well, that is like saying you've got a full kitchen and use of every expensive gadget in the world and just make something wonderful. So uh, right there, I was in with Deb. And of course, I'm so glad that I've got history with Marie. She and I, she hasn't really hit on this, but for the last, what, 10, 12 years or so, somewhere in that years, vicinity, years, yeah. I, I agree. Marie and I have been collaborating with her writing a story, a novel, and me creating quilts at companion with the story and with the novel. And so, you know, when Marie says, well, I'm going to do 1940s, just go with it. That kind of leaves me a wide open palette also. So what I did was take Deb's authority to implement as many, as many tools as were necessary to pull off an absolutely gorgeous design and Marie's um, storyline, which she outlined to me right at the very beginning. I think this is going to be um, you know, a story uh, about women and, and, and World War II. So the first thing that I did when I went to design the quilt was I, I did some research. I wanted to make sure that every element, every block, every shape that I put into the quilt was truly a shape that I could find in a 1940s or earlier project. If I saw a design and it was after the 1940s, it, it didn't have a chance to get into the project. So all of the, all the shapes and all of the pieces that are in there, even the one that's in the center, the Liberty Star, I'm going to duck out of the way so you can kind of see that. So cool. That Liberty Star block is actually from the 1940s, late 30s, early 40s. So that's the first thing that I did. And then because it was World War II, if you ever did any research on any of the art 
that was around in World War II, everything was red, white, and blue. I mean, we were so focused on patriotism and America and red, white, and blue. And I knew that I wanted to do something that felt like that, but wasn't in your face, red, white, and blue, which is mm-hmm. why we ended up with the color palette that we ended up with, you know, and that's, that's what, that's kind of what I was working with, with Jason as, you know, yes, red, white, and blue, but not red, white, and blue. It could be. Um, I'm going to take a minute and pull the fabrics up and give you kind of a close-up look at what they look like. They are absolutely incredible. A couple of the things that we incorporated into the fabric, Marie said the stories are going to revolve around letters. So some of the fabrics, oh, I'm going to get them in, in screen here, have postmarks on them because what did the letters get? Some of the fabric have, She's, whoops, let me see if I can get it in here, stamps in it. Right, can you see that, girls? I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of weird. I guess I need to hold it near me. Um, and even the backing, the backing fabric is a nice large stamp version, but because so much of the story revolved around stamps. So we really did, all of us, work together. Deb has her area of expertise and you know the connection. I didn't know Jason before we did this. I know him now. He's a great guy. I agree. Yeah, and, I agree. You know, and Marie, I know that what she's, thinking sort of you know again her brain and my brain I don't really want to go there but I've got enough confidence in what she tells me that I can build a project that is in step and in sync with what she's doing uh story-wise now whether some of these blocks end up being in the story or not is irrelevant but all of these blocks could have been made in the 1940s they would have been made with templates not in my world. They're all going to be made with tools. So, um, you know, so that's kind of, I don't want to get into it too much. This is a, an awesome quilt. Uh, we did a test drive with some scrap fabric from my stash and one of the girls tested all the, all the instructions and all the measurements and everything else. It came out just as, just fantastic. So we can't really, can't really wait until we can get, uh, get a, a, live, a real live version of this quilt um, in our hands and, and, and around it shows so that you guys can all see it. And how big is it, Deb? Oh, how man, you caught me off guard. I think it's 102 by 102. It's, so it's, it's a good big. Size. Yeah, it is big. It is yeah, big. It's a good, big quilt, which that's one of the things a lot of customers tell us is that they yep. want big quilts, you know, in a block of the month, a lot of times you don't find a king size quilt. Well, mm-hmm. here's your opportunity. So right. um, we're gonna have that backing fabric is amazing, you guys. It is that post, um, it is the- Postage stamps. Postage stamp, yes, Deb's got it. Increased 200%, so it's a large print for the back. <clears throat> so you're going to love that. Um, okay, one thing I want to stop and do real quick, um, since we are live on Facebook, is to ask, we've got um, several hundred people watching us. You guys, if you would share this, if you'll just click on the little share button that's there, you have friends who would love to know about this program. So if you'll click the share button, then that will notify all your friends of this event. And even if they can't hop on right now, they'll be able to watch this later and be able to see this. Um, All right, I've been telling you to stay to the end because we're gonna have prizes. So hang in there, we're gonna have prizes. Uh, I just, before we wrap up, I want to do just a couple of fun things though. I wanna ask Marie and Deb, just some fun questions like Marie, what about your pets? What kind of pets do you have? I'm so glad you asked that. Can I say one thing though, that I think people have asked me who haven't maybe done a block of the month. Hang on, I'm coming back, I swear. Haven't done a block of the month with you before. You get the backing with this too. Some big no. block of the month programs don't include the backing. This one does. Um, so about my pets. Oh, there she is. And you may notice the resemblance. This is um, Showgirl. Uh, that's her Facebook name. I don't like, I mean, she has a secret name, but that's just us. She and I, as you may have guessed, we actually won the, um, the owner pet lookalike contest at the dog days uh, in, in our town recently. So she is my constant 
mm, I know I love you. My constant companion, she's sitting here behind me and she goes everywhere I go. She is, she fits nicely under an airplane seat and travels quite well. So um, she comes with now. me. Now, how yeah. about you, Deb? Do you have pets? I do. They frequently show up in the video since we show them, since we uh, film them right at the house and we have cats and we never know who's going to show up. We're down to three. We actually lost two in the last couple of months, which is sad, but they had great lives and, and, you know, they're still with us out in, out in the backyard. Um, but we have three, three really fantastic helpers in my sewing room, especially when I have that chain piecing stuff going on. They're right there to help me with it. Yeah. Well, if anybody knows me, you know, I have Jack, who is a little, little black and white Shih Tzu, and he's the, he's the love of, I tell everybody, he's the man I sleep with. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, tell us, uh, we were talking about restaurants a minute ago. Deb, tell us, what is your favorite food? Oh my gosh, there's not any that I don't like. Um, I think it, when you asked me the question, or sent me the question, you said, what's my favorite dessert? And I have been thinking about it. And okay. you know, that's the biggest category. Um, but right now in the spring, I'm going home and I'm going to do this this afternoon because you've got me thinking about it. I'm making a rhubarb pie, which, oh my gosh, that Ooh. sweet and that sour is just my knockdown, absolute best dessert in the springtime. You know, we don't have rhubarbs in Texas. I know. We, you know, but the grocery stores get it in. If yeah. well, you have to ask them. Most of most of the grocers say, "Is that red celery?" No, it's not red <laughs> celery. It's rhubarb. Yeah. How about Lucky Marie? What's your favorite food? You know, it's funny you would say. I, I've been thinking about strawberry rhubarb. I've been. I I have a blog on my oh. website, which is mariebostrick.com, but I've got a blog called Fiercely Marie. And I cook a lot and I've actually been giving lots of thought recently to strawberry rhubarb. And I have an experiment in mind that may or may not work out. I'm thinking about trying to add mango to a strawberry rhubarb thing to give it some sweetness without so much added sugar. But I don't know if that'll work or not. We'll see. You may or may not see it on the blog. Um, as far as other desserts, I never met a cookie I didn't love. <laughs> It is my, remember back in the old days, I think it was Weight Watchers or something, which I've been on for like my whole life. Um, there used to be red light foods, which were the foods that you couldn't stop. Yeah, cookies, that would be my red light food. Mm -hmm. Well, that's wonderful. You know, I love cookies as well. Uh, okay, we're going to be wrapping up. We're going to be giving away, I'm going to be calling out some names. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be giving five $20 shopping sprees. Woohoo! And for you to be able, the people who um, win these uh, $20 store credits or whatever you want, these can be applied to a Deb Tucker ruler only. So uh, these are people that have been on with us and have been watching. So I'm going to call their names out. And what we're going to have you do, let me call their names out first. Jerry Smith Inglade. Yay! You're the winner of a $20 gift certificate. Uh, Lois Herrick. Lois has been on cruise with us before. Actually, several, several cruises. Uh, Beverly McPherson. Kathy Holfinger, H O L F I N G E R. And Glenda Dexter Marsh. All right, you guys, what we need you to do is we will instant message you a code. We have your names and we will send you an instant message with the code. And then you can get on our website and you can order any Deb Tucker ruler that you want. And speaking of that, Deb, why not, yeah. can you give us a rundown of the rulers that are in this program? I do sure you know could. that off the top of your head? Oh, I'm just going to, I've got them here and I'm, I'm not going to hold them up, but I'm just going to make sure I touch a base with all of them. Um, okay. Two of our, our classic fundamentals, the Tucker Trimmer one and the Wing Clipper one. If you don't have those, you should. They're the power tools in my whole quilting lineup. Um, we're also using the V-Block. That's what the V-Block and the corner beam are the two tools that we use on the interior, but also on that big border, piece border that's around the outside. Uh, the original square squared tool that does that 
diamond square unit. Um, the four patch square up that does all that interesting chain that you see in there, the corner pop tool and the rapid fire Lemoyne star. And we I, will be, go ahead. We will be telling you in advance which rulers you need. You don't have to buy them all up front. Um, but we will be telling you, you know, what month you need what tools so you can spread that out. A lot of you have a lot of these tools. Exactly. And that's why I didn't feel bad about us using a lot of them because I want this to be a learning experience. A lot of you have the tools and have never used them because you don't know how to use them. And I would, I'm hoping to help you with that, with this program. By the end of this program, you'll, you'll have a good a repertoire of how to use Deb Tucker's tools. So we're gonna, we're gonna be doing it. We're all taking journeys. Marie back into her novella and Deb with joining the two of us at all, and all three of us together into a new business venture. And me, I'm just quilting it like usual. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something. I've got, I have basically, I think I have every single tool Deb, whenever I see Deb at a quilt show, we always meet up at quilt shows. I go over to the booth and I say, okay, Sarah, what don't I have yet? And they, you know, they give me what I have. Right there. And I will say when you have, once you have these tools, you're going to use it on this, this journeys block of the month program. You're going to use them forever after this. Deb Tucker tools are the main reason that I can now design my own quilts because I use those tools. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't used to be brave enough to like make my own patterns before. I always had somebody else's patterns. But now that I've got Deb's tools, I know that I can put that in there and just, it's all gonna work out. So it's really made me, and again, I am a writer because I can't do math. Um, so <laughs> this takes all the math out of it for me, which is wonderful for someone like me. And Hi. it's just really given me it's given me a whole tool chest of stuff that I can use in my quilts anytime I want. So I love that about your tools, Deb. Thanks. And once you learn how to use Deb's tools, you will, there's a term out there, you'll learn how to tuckerize <laughs> a pattern. We actually have that term trademarked. Did you know that? Did you? We Good. Did yeah, and that's where you take a pattern, you look at it. And you go, okay, I'm not going to make it this way. Out. I'm going to use Deb Tucker's tools and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And so it's really cool to be able to see how you can use the tools in just a normal pattern that isn't written by Deb Tucker and her team. Uh, I also want to tell you that Deb has certified instructors yes. uh, in all areas of the United States. If you would like to know where you can go to have a class from a certified instructor, just get on their website or get in touch with Deb and her team and they can tell you how to. And if you're a shop owner and you'd like to have a certified instructor come to your store and teach some classes, that is a great opportunity, you know, opportunity to do that. Yeah, these are, your, okay. these are your local experts. Yeah, exactly. All right, so we're gonna be uh, signing off. I wanna tell you that you can sign up for this block of the month program from the Stitch in Heaven website, just go to our website, stitchinheaven.com and search journeys and it will bring it up. Um, you can sign up with the code. It's normally a $25 registration fee. You can sign up with the code journeys and we will give you $24 off your registration fee, which means you're signing up for $1. So we just want to get everybody involved that we can get involved. Like I said, right now, we're planning to um, launch this in September. Hopefully, we haven't had a delay in our fabric, but that's yet to be seen. So right now, we're, we're marching for September. And um, so we want everybody to get signed up. So Absolutely. do y'all have anything to say to sign off? This has been fun. I can't wait to do this. Fun. Yeah, and I was just going to say, you know, you don't have to learn how to use these tools from me at a show because truth be whole, told, I'm trying to decrease my presence at some of these shows because I'm getting older and I'm getting tired or more tired, I should say. But if you visit my website, you can see how each of the tools works 
um, before you buy it. You can see it um, once you do have it in your hands. And one of the things we didn't mention, Deb, was our collaboration with Jackie O'Brien. Jackie oh, O'Brien. Yeah. Jackie O'Brien is one of, uh, I have over a hundred certified instructors now, literally all around the world. Jackie O'Brien is one of our most talented um, uh, certified instructors. She was in the very first class. She is an incredible blogger and she, we have brought her into the, the, the fold here. And she is going to actually be doing a blog in association with the project. And now, Deb, you talked to her a little bit more. Do you want to fill in any of the gaps there or? Yeah, what we plan to do every month is have her do a, it's actually a tutorial every month that, that will go through the blocks, how to make them. She's planning on using some video where she needs to. Uh, I talked with her yesterday. She is amazing and she already has a block. So she's going to be doing uh, really, it's a tutorial style blog for us yes. uh, for this program every single month. So you'll have instruction that you can go to on how to put this blog together, where to use the fabric, you know. So it's, right. it's going to be really fun. And her blog site is If These Threads Could Talk, Jackie yep. O'Brien. And you can check her out and get to know her a little bit and get signed up and and. So that when the blog is ready, you're ready to receive. Yep, that's absolutely right. Good. All right, you guys, thank you very much. Thank you, Marie. Thank you, Deb. Uh, thank you, everyone who joined us. I hope you enjoyed this. Let us know if you like this format. So maybe we can do this some more and let us know what we can do better. And so I am Deb Luttrell with Stitch in Heaven, and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.